7 Tips on How to Get More Vapor from Your Weed Vape Were you expecting to get thick, mighty, voluminous clouds from your dry air vaporizer but only getting thin wispy vapor? There are many different factors that could prevent you from getting the clouds you want. Stay along in this video and I'll tell you all about them and the adjustments you need to make in order to avoid them. Luckily, most of the time, a simple adjustment would do the trick and make your experience 10 times better. Proficient usage of your herbal vape is essential for enjoyable vaping. Most of the time, trial and error is your best bet on figuring things out. The following vaping tips and advice will help you get more vapor from your dry air vaporizer and set you on the right path. Of course, an obvious tip is to use a good vaporizer. Awesome. Otherwise, none of these tips would work. So let's jump into tip number one. Get your herbs as dry as possible. Seems obvious, right? They are called dry air vaporizers after all. So the drier the herb, the better the vapor. You should always get the driest herbs you can from your dispensary. But if your herb is not dry enough, you can use a simple glass jar to get them drier. All you need to do is place your herb in a glass jar without a lid. Place tissue paper on top of and beneath your herb and leave it overnight. This should remove any moisture from the herb. You can also use moisture absorbing dehumidifier bags that you can buy online to help with the process. Tip number two, grind it up. A good grinder is useful for many different reasons. Breaking up your herb is essential for efficient vaping. Properly ground herb has a lot of exposed surface area so hot air can travel through and pick up the terpenes and other potent molecules. This would cause your herb to burn evenly and it will get you the most vapor. A good grinder is essential to producing nice, abundant, and flavorful vapor. My personal favorite is the SLX grinder. It has a ceramic coating so nothing sticks to it. It turns as good as new even after a year of heavy use and zero cleaning. So whether SLX or another, Use a high-end grinder to grind your herb finely and evenly. You'll find the link on the description below to check the SLX grinder. Tip number 3. Pack the perfect oven. Most weed vapes have specific instruction on how much herb should be placed in the chamber, but a general rule of thumb is to pack a full and fluffy oven. The reason is that dry herbs works best when the heated air can pass through the ground herb and heat it up evenly. In addition to getting better vapor, you will also get better flavor and potency because you will be extracting more of the active substances in the dry herb. Packing a fluffy oven will lower the draw resistance so you don't have to inhale as hard from the mouthpiece. Packing too much herb in the chamber reduces the airflow, which means that you have to inhale harder, which means that you won't get a lot of vapor. The perfect oven is fluffy and even, and just like with any other items on this list, experiment and understand what works best with your vape. What I usually do is overfill the chamber, then tap with my finger to make sure it's even. Then I would remove excess herbs from the top of the oven. Tip number four, turn up the heat. Above all, this tip might depend on vapor's preference and could be subjective to some. Frankly speaking, the higher you set your temperature, the closer you will come to a smoke-like experience and the stronger the effects of your vapor will be. But here's the tricky part. For most vaporizers, the higher you set your temperature, the more flavor will deteriorate and the harsher the vapor will be. So, experiment and find a sweet spot between flavor and vapor production. Here, you'll see the vapor production will be very light when you set the temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and below. On the other hand, you will have high vapor production when the temperature is set to 380 degrees Fahrenheit up to a blazing 420 degrees Fahrenheit. I start most of my sessions around 380 degrees Fahrenheit and increase up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit towards the end. It's nice to start a session low and get that fresh aroma and then increase to really get the full effect. If it's bigger clouds you want, then you'll need to go higher than the ideal. But you should keep in mind that you won't be getting the best flavor from your herb. Tip number 5. Use the right inhaling technique. Long slow draw helps you extract more of the vapor, but the length of the draw is different with each vaporizer. So, you should experiment with your vape to find a draw duration that works best for you. Most vaporizers work better if you sip them instead of rip them. This means that you draw in a controlled way and take a full breath in. This part produces varying results because it is different from one vape to another. No matter which vape you use, it will take a few draws to get the hang of it. Generally, I recommend drawing for at least 10 seconds and taking a full controlled breath in. You can adjust the speed and intensify to find the perfect draw. If drawing is hard, you may have overpacked the oven. Try to take out some material and loosen up or fluff the rest. Practice makes perfect, so experiment and analyze the results. Tip number 6. Clean regularly. 
This might seem like an obvious tip, but it's extremely important that you keep your herb chamber, your vapor path, and especially the screens in your vapor path clean, clear from the residues and clogs. Most vaporizers can easily be cleaned with isopropyl alcohol or Q-dips dipped in ISO alcohol. I strongly recommend cleaning your vape right after a session. You see, cleaning your vape is like washing the dishes. It's easy if you do it right away, but if you delay it a bit longer, the residue will dry up and will be harder to remove. Heat melts it. So, clean your oven right after your session when the oven is still semi-warm. Lastly, let your vape sit for a while. Another good thing to do in conjunction with all of the mentioned techniques is to wait 20 or 30 seconds after the vape has reached the temperature you selected and then start inhaling. Or, during a session, you can wait 10 to 30 seconds between draws. The reason for waiting in either case is to let heat build up in the oven. If you combine this with the above draw technique, you can significantly increase the amount of vapor you produce. These tips will help you up your weed vaping game and will improve vapor production, flavor, and reduce draw resistance. Do you have other tips that I did not mention in this video? Write them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear them. If you learned something new, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and get more tips and tricks that will kickstart your vaping game. Thanks for watching and happy vaping!